This video is to introduce the adjustable pericardial lock technique for complex mitral valve repair. This novel technique provides full control of the repair process and enables the surgeon to adjust the length of artificial cords until the very last moment of the repair, and so eliminating the chance of under or over correction. The prolapsing segments of the valve are identified by intraoperative transesophageal echocardiography. In this case, severe P2 prolapse and moderate A2 prolapse are shown with severe mitral regurgitation. The operation is done by minimally invasive approach. The initial classic valve analysis is performed. The segment P2 has severe elongation, thickening, and prolapse. A2 prolapse is also confirmed by comparing with the level of the reference P1 and also with the anterior annulus. To expose the papillary muscles, we use this Shiraz papillary muscle retractor designed in our center and made available by Fehling. The retractor is released inside the valve to expose the papillary muscles nicely. It is decided to use four CV4 neocords, two, each, two in each papillary muscle, two for segment P2 and two for segment A2. The cords pass through the papillary muscles in U fashion, reinforced by pledges without tying to have equal strain on both limbs. The corda are then left alone until the annuloplasty ring is in place and the final annular configuration is fixed. We use a number 32 rigid annuloplasty ring in this case. Before tying the sutures, the four neocords are brought inside the ring by hook instrument. Some secondary cords needs to be cut. The neocords should now be passed through the appropriate sides in the leaflets. Two cords are passed through the A2 free edge in the medial and lateral sides. According to the preoperative echo data and the expected possibility of postoperative SAM in this case, we pass the posterior neocords not through the free edge of the very large P2, but through the proper sites in its mid part. In order to make the adjustable locks, a narrow piece of pericardium, two millimeters wide, is harvested and held by the assistant. Each limb of the Gore-Tex cords pass twice in the same direction, close together, in a small area in this pericardial tape. This small piece of pericardium can now move along the Gore-Tex cords with a nice level of resistance. This resistance keeps the lock in place and does not let it slip on the neocord during the pressurized water test.
This process takes only 30 seconds for each neocord. Now is the time to determine the right length of the neocords. As default, we initially locate the locks at the level of the annuloplasty ring. The water test is now performed. In most cases, the test shows satisfactory competence at this stage, with no changes required. However, the technique gives the possibility of any major or minor adjustments if needed. In this case, the valve is acceptably competent, but to have a perfect result, some minor adjustments should be done. This part of A2 looks overcorrected. On the other hand, the other part is still prolaptic. To ensure that there is no SAM after the repair, we prefer to have P2 a bit more pulled down and the cooptation line more posterior. All these adjustments can be done very easily by simply sliding the locks up or down over the cords to obtain the best shape and function of the valve. Now the water test shows a much more symmetrical valve with perfect shape and geometry, which may positively affect the durability of the repair. Both pictures can now be seen together to compare the configuration of the valve before and after the final adjustment, which clearly shows the difference. The lengths of the cords should now be fixed. Four relatively loose knots are placed just over the locks. Careful not to push the position of the locks down. The needles are then passed through the cusp again, followed by four subsequent knots. This has the advantage of securing the cords, hiding the pericardial pieces, and avoiding long, bulky rows of cortex nuts. Final staining of the valve shows very good cooptation with good cooptation height both in the anterior and posterior leaflets. Post-op echo confirms perfect result, good cooptation and no SAM. This procedure has been done in our center in more than 60 patients since December 2018. Due to simplicity, reliability, and perfect results, it is now our routine practice in almost all cases with complex degenerative mitral valve disease.